You know, it's really not as though people don't know. In fact, more often than not, when I talk to people, I realize very quickly they do know. They know there is a God. They know what God requires of them. They have heard the gospel. They know the gospel. In fact, more often than not, they know what they don't want to believe in as much as they know what they should believe in. Because most people want to convince themselves of what they want God to be rather than what God has said to be. Because it's easier to deal with a person, a human being like you and I, than it is to actually have to deal with God who says yes or no. You see, when you read it in the Bible, there's no doubt as to what God is saying. Christians may interpret it for different reasons, especially when they become educated and they start to get into studying and evaluating and doing different things that really confuse non-Christians. But the non-Christian has no problem knowing exactly what the requirements are for salvation. Except that a person has Jesus, they know they're not saved. They know they're going to hell. They know there is a hell and they are firmly convinced that if they can talk to and in some way calm their own guilty conscience, then they will feel better about themselves as though God agrees with them. And so, more often than not, when I talk to people, I see this tendency of trying to argue, really, not to the person or argue with the person, but argue with themselves. The battle they're fighting really is inside themselves. It's not with the person they're talking to. It's not personal. It's salvation. It's not personal. It's the person. You see, it's not about me trying to convince or win someone over to my way of thinking. No. God has already been talking to that person. God is working on the inside of that person. That person literally is wrestling in their own heart with the living God. They have thoughts. They don't know where they're coming from. They have emotions. They don't know what they're feeling. They have a whole battlefield that's wide open. And we aren't there to do battle. We're just there to talk about what God has said. If you've opened up a door and you're in your house, you know what's inside your house. You open the door. You said, come on into my house. And you show people your house. You don't argue about things you don't know. You don't talk about things you don't know. You talk about things you do know. So you open up your living room and you sit down and you have a cup of coffee and you talk about what you've experienced. You talk about what you know. Because you see, a person that's arguing with you wants to change the subject. They want to rearrange the furniture. They want to come into your house and tell you what you believe. Don't do that. It's pretty simple. What God has told me, I stick with. If God has said, hey, Anybody that has Jesus is saved. You know, it's like, hey, fine. That's simple for me. If I got Jesus, I'm saved. He who has the Son hath life. He who has not the Son of God has not life. I can tell someone, do you have Jesus? And they'll say, probably avoid the subject and say, well, you know, doing good and doing this. And they'll talk about all the other things. And they'll try to get me into a debate about, you know, some side topic. And I'll still listen and I'll just say, well, if you have Jesus, you have eternal life. If you have done Jesus, you have an eternal life, just like 1 John says. And the person will go on talking about, you know, the Bible or Christianity or this or good people or what about these people and that people. And God will show you how to answer. Because he says, if at that moment when you were brought before legislatures or before the priests or before the law or before any other subject matter material or any situation or circumstance that comes up in your life, even trials and temptations, don't think ahead what you're going to say. Don't go out and prepare your apologetic you know, presentation and start working your way through it. They already know. What the battle is, isn't what's being said. It's what you can't see and what you don't know. You see, the only thing you need to stick with is what you do know. And if you've opened the door to your living room, you know what to share from your living room. If you've opened the door to your kitchen, you share from your kitchen. If you've opened the door and you're sitting down having a cup of coffee, hey, you may be talking about the weather, whatever it may be. But the point is, don't get distracted from the main attraction, which is the focusing in on what is the reality of what the person is saying. The bottom line is, that person has a battle going that you can't see, you don't know, and you have no way of understanding, because you're already saved.
you let them deal with their own contradictions. And you just remind them, hey, this is what this is what I said. This is what God has told me. This is what I know. And leave it at that. Let it go and not worry about what the results are, but let God deal with the person, the individual, because you're just there to share the truth. You're not there to beat them up. You're not there to beat them down. You just simply say, hey, look, here's heaven, here's hell. That's the way it is. You're not supposed to go here, hell, that is. You're supposed to go here, heaven, that is. The way you get there is because of Jesus. Jesus said, hey, call upon me and you'll be saved. Come to me and I will give you rest. God said that every soul that liveth must be born again. Hey, it's pretty simple for me. According to Romans, everybody's covered. But the interesting thing is, whether you realize it or not, whether you accept it or not, the fact is, everyone does know. God has placed some kind of saving grace, we're told, inside of a person's soul so that they know the truth. They have heard the truth at some point in time. They have heard God speak to them in some way. They may not have recognized it. They may have changed it now. and They may have rearranged it. But we're told every soul will stand before God. And that soul, even condemned to hell, will say, Righteous and true are your ways, O God. Righteous and true are you in all your ways, O God. Even to the condemnation of those that had the opportunity. Because they will acknowledge they did have a chance. And that's why we have to stick with grace. We have to walk in mercy. We have to love unconditionally. Well, when we say love unconditionally, that's really not a quite accurate nomer. We have to love with the love of God that God has given us in order to love the people that they are not aware of what they are doing and that even as Jesus said from the cross, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. We need to recognize that we can forgive. So let us forgive, forget, move forward, share, and relate what we do know about God and His love. That all men should be saved. All men could be saved. All men, it's God's will that they could, should, would be saved if they would call upon the name of the Lord so that they shall be saved. But if they don't make the choice, then the condemnation has already gone into the world, and that is this, that they have rejected the only begotten Son of God. And that is what sends them to hell. Because as surely as we are alive, and we can see the sunrise and the 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 sunrise and the sunset and the night and day. Oh yeah, God sends souls to hell every day. And hell was intended for angels that have fallen, not for man. So since God has provided a way of escape that we should be able to make ourselves available to salvation, what are we doing sharing about every other thing and arguing about every other topic except for the one most important thing for the ungodly to know? The one most important thing for those who are not saved to realize. The one most important thing that is more important than giving them a nice meal before they die and go to hell. And that is eternal life. How dare we keep to ourselves so precious a gift that God has given us, except that we go forward and share that Jesus has died, Jesus has rose, Jesus is coming again, but Jesus has provided salvation for us that we should know the Father and we should know the Son and that we should ask and we would receive eternal life that we should ask and God would live inside us that God would change us, that God would rearrange us, that God would make us into the image of His Son that God would accept us if we have the Son we must have the Son of God or we have not life eternal life and so what more can be said it's not about us, but it is about saving a soul from hell.